What's up, sports freaks, and welcome to All Sports Media Team Presents Double Dribble, episode 43. We're getting closer and closer, George, that big 5-0. It's 5-0. Bro, it's crazy, right? I can't believe that. This week, what do we got coming your way? We got the Clutch Cambodian. And you'll know why we call her that in just a few minutes. But this girl does a lot. She is a Drew League champion, um, just like our previous week with Courtney Ford. Right? That's Courtney Ford's teammate, which is kind of cool. Um, so the running, so the running hoodie, bro. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> there it is, teammate. He's already cutting me off, and we just started. Oh God, here we. It's gonna be a wild one. Hey, as you can see, she also has that team run it. That's where they won the Drew League with. Um, she is an LGBTQ. Um, advocate, a BLM advocate. She's a huge Laker fan. Show off that coffee mug, MJ. You know what's up. Oh, yeah. Word. Start your day off with the Lakers. That's right. Huge Laker yeah. fan. She's got some pretty cool stories about that. And her three game is really strong. Um, I'm ready to find out a little bit more than what we know, what we've seen her on the court. We talked to her last Thursday. Um, it was really, really cool. I can't wait to get to know Miss Mary MJ Haas. What's going down, MJ? What's up, guys? Thanks for having me. It's a fine Saturday morning. It's a nice Saturday, huh? We were just talking about the weather, how it's not too bad yet. Yeah, super super nice today. Yeah. How are you guys doing? We're cool, cool. George is hanging out, got all his eggs, and we're all energized, ready to go. You know what's up. And then I actually found out this morning that MJ lives by me. This is freaking crazy. What a freaking small world, <laughs> right? I love it. All right. Connections, like you never know where these connections are going to come from. Um, okay, MJ. So our show, first off, I think you're going to answer this right at the beginning. Our show is called The Clutch Cambodian. Can you, um, usually what we do, we have our guests just pop in, give us a little BG, give us a little background from childhood to where they are now, just little highlights here and there. Um, if you could do that, um, we'll find out obviously about the Cambodian thing because you told me about that. Um, so if yeah. you can go and do that, we'll bounce off of your questions. We'll have some fun and hopefully we don't drive each other too crazy. Go for yeah. it, okay. it's all yours. All right. All right. So um, I was actually uh, born, actually not in Cambodia, but I was born in Thailand okay. um, in a refugee camp. Oh, wow. So, <laughs> okay. Born in a refugee camp because um, if you know a little bit about Cambodia, um, there is a war going on between communism and, um, and the current... Um, political uh-huh. whatever yeah it was the, the communist the, the communist was just trying to take over um so my family had to escape we ended up in a refugee camp that's where i was born um like uh i think it was a christian nurse that delivered me so that's why i got my name mary she oh, named cool. me. <laughs> yeah hmm. um my family had to then move to the philippines and stay there for like six months until we got sponsorship Oh, wow. um, and then we moved, yeah, we moved out here, uh, actually was in Stockton first, that's where my family kind of stayed for like a year or so, and then we moved to Long Beach, and that's right. where I grew up, in Long Beach, um, I went to Long Beach Milliken High School, I don't know if you guys heard of it, um, and then from Long Beach, played four years varsity, uh, back in the day, <laughs> High school a long time ago. Yeah, they, they knew what they were getting when you came in. <laughs> we had a squad though. We had a squad. We had like six freshmen on varsity, so that was cool. Um, mm. Then I uh, committed early to Long Beach State when I was a junior. Okay. Uh, signed with Long Beach State. Home. Yeah, I didn't have a choice. My dad was like, Long Beach State's recruiting you. You're going to Long Beach State. <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> what do you say, Pop? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I got to come home and get food for my mom. So if you cook for me, do my laundry and stuff. So that was cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and then, um, unfortunately, yeah, I had to deal with some injuries. Um, my Long Beach State, yeah, uh, decided to, to transfer out of Long Beach State, um, it was like too much, uh, it was like too close to home, you know, mm-hmm. 
So I decided to, not that this is far away from home, but I moved to Irvine. So I went to UCI. Okay. I finished uh, my What is my it, the Ant Eaters? Ant Eaters. Yeah, the Ant Eaters. That's that, baby. Yeah, so I finished my career at, long, uh, at UC Irvine and graduated from there. And then uh, actually, like a couple years after I graduated, I started playing in the Drew League, the Women's Drew sure. League. So. Cool. I'm like, yeah, I'm a I'm an old head at the gym league. I've been playing. You're not for that like, old. Stop it. Yeah, stop I've, it. I've been playing for like seven, eight years, and my teammates call me grandma. They call me team uh, mom. They yeah. always make fun of me for being old. I'm like the oldest one on the team. So for real, it's funny. Yeah. Uh, you don't look but you don't look it uh, at all. Don't say it. Uh, thank you, <laughs> thank you. But she doesn't. Uh, okay. Okay. But you're a champion. Yeah. You're a champion in the Drews, right? Yeah, just one. Uh, I think it was 2019, 2020. It was 2019. I was actually there. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Soccer. Um, <laughs> hey, I yeah, have man. one of my friends playing the Drew League. So. There you go. Who Who's your friend that plays in the Drew? So we have our friend T. Um, we had, yeah, T played in that. And then, like, I remember, yeah, her team played against you guys in the championship round, and you guys upset them. So that's how I remembered yeah. you guys. P-Flash? That championship. Um, he, you said P-Flash? I don't know. P-Flash? Is that what you're talking No, no, I said, like, T. Oh, T. Lady T. Coach T was oh. on. Oh, okay. That's what it is. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, we just, we actually talked about that championship with her when she was on. Yeah. Okay. And she said, "Everybody in the Drew is dogs. Everybody in the Drew is dogs." Yep. Yep. <laughs> so yeah. That. That's true. <laughs> she says it all yeah. the time. It's hilarious. It's crazy because it's like I keep getting older, and these girls keep getting younger, and I'm like, uh, "Dang!" <laughs> you don't show it on the court, though. You don't show it on the <laughs> court. You like on the court, you look super athletic. No, thank you guys. But I feel old. But <laughs> <laughs> every every athlete says that though. They're like, oh, you know, hurt. And I'm dumb. Remember Buddha? Buddha is Buddha doesn't look his age either. And he, he's like, man, my whole like I my whole regimen is all different now. Like I have to change up everything. And, you know, that's just how it gets sometimes. But we could yeah. fool us. We've seen you play, and mm-hmm. yeah, they would have fooled us. Trust me. So. Mary, you're young at heart. You're young at heart. Don't, yeah, don't, let, any, heart yeah, don't let anybody say otherwise. <laughs> it's all good. I embrace it. <laughs> Crazy. Thank you. All right. So after the Drew, well, where do we go after the Drew? Where are we after that? Um, after Well, I've just been playing in the Drew League and okay. that's it. Just been working and stuff. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Any cool life events during those times? I mean, the refugee thing is kind of a cool story to tell I'm not, maybe not living it but it's, it's a cool story that you can tell later on like you're doing now um was there any other big events that happened in your life that you want to possibly bring up or oh uh, yeah dude, about but you? Like, what's that other things that might stand out about you possibly uh well a cool event that happened was when I was at UC Irvine um I met Kobe nice. <laughs> that was like Whoa. one of the highlights of my life yeah, and it's a uh, Gigi's I'm birthday jealous. today. Happy birthday to Gigi. Heavenly birthday. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Happy, Gigi, yeah. happy birthday, Gigi. Rest in peace. Yeah. In peace. I got it. Since I wasn't going to talk about this till later, but since you brought it up, you being the female baller, badass baller that you are, you know, what are your thoughts about Gigi on the baller she could have been? Hey, man. It's, it's so sad, you know? Like, she, she had so much potential. And you can just see, like, just from the highlight videos of her, that mm-hmm. she had the fundamentals down. Like, she was already, you know, step back. Right. Around playing playing like, like her, her dad. dad. Yeah. Right. At, how old is she? Like, she's 15 today. She's going to be 15. She would have been 15. Uh, so she was, you know, in her teens doing that. Like, mm-hmm. that's, people don't even learn how to, you know, they don't get those moves down until they're in, like, college or pros yeah. or late in high school down. career or something yeah. like that and she was getting yeah. recruited already too like she had recruited yeah. yeah, con was already giving her a scholarship you know oh, yeah <laughs> That's what she wanted to <laughs> yeah and 
And speaking of Kobe, um, so after Kobe's death, like, what did you learn about how Kobe plays and what does the Mamba mentality mean to you? Kobe was just, like, so much more than basketball for me, you know? Like, the whole Mamba mentality, you can take it with you anywhere. Like, you can incorporate it into work. Like, my job isn't exciting at all. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I work in a warehouse, and it's not that exciting. But, you know, I take pride in the work that I do, and that's, you know, how – Kobe just wanted to be the best in everything that he did. And I, mm -hmm. I kind of, you know, put that into my mentality as well. Even just at work, you know, days that I don't want to get up and go to work, I get up and go to work mm -hmm. because Kobe would have gotten up and, you know, mm -hmm. gone to work. Yeah, he would have gone to work at 2 a.m. Like, <laughs> yeah, he would have put in, you know, if he worked like a corporate job, he would probably put in 16 hour days. Like, yeah that's that's the mama mentality like you know like you you gotta mentally push yourself to places where it's uncomfortable and you don't want to be and mm -hmm. um and that's what makes you better um mm -hmm. as a person and in everything you do and shout out to kobe right here right. he's on me oh, what? and she yeah. got the tag I didn't, too. Yeah. Whoa. I didn't even know about that i didn't know <laughs> that coming. awesome that's what I'm saying. Like he's just more more than basketball, you know. But obviously, you know, you you take that in in every time you step on court as well. Mm -hmm. Like like he says, you want to be a dog, and yeah. you know you you want to win. Mm -hmm. And then not even just in like you said, not even just in sports, but in life as well. He always made it so that his teammates stood out as well. And you're the same way on the court. We talked about that on Thursday. I said, hey, you're not shooting as much as you usually are, and you're like, hey, my friends <laughs> are killing it all week every week yeah. you know and I, I felt that when you said that you know so it you, you take that approach in life as well yeah absolutely um on the court I mean I, I'm at a point in my basketball life and just in my life in general where I'm just trying to radiate positivity mm -hmm. trying to have a good time you know it's all about fun yeah, and joke then... around with me and everything yeah I was <laughs> joke around smiling. with you two guys on the sidelines yeah <laughs> Yeah, hyping I, you up on the court. Yeah, you guys stay hyping us up. Hyping yeah. us all of, the whole team up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, um, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, especially George. He's crazy. <laughs> He's the most unneutral cameraman you'll ever meet in your entire life. So I told, oh, you, you, I, told, I, told, I told George, if you ever get a job with any sports, you better get like one game because you're going to be screwed otherwise. Yeah. <laughs> so you you got to be like a Laker broadcaster. Like there you go. <laughs> yeah, I will. And then um, I told Ricky this on Thursday, like, hey, like I should, I should fit in on TNT. There um, you go. Oh, that's the TNT. NBA. So I'll tell him that <laughs> Thursday. Yeah. And then. <laughs> Yeah, and then, like, not only that, so, like, I don't know, I think you guys heard when I, when me and Ricky kept on saying four fusion, when, yeah. um, see, when yeah. Courtney kept on hitting threes, and I told him he should have did Mustang, but it's just me. Wait, but Courtney drives a Mustang. Thank you, MJ. I know, but, like, thank you. I, no, so, so the Third, reason why I said it's because of her last name. It's because <laughs> I, of her last so name. It's still a Ford. But Ford I Mustang. told him. I know. <laughs> yes, that's what I said. I know. And then I told him, you know, we could be a like, board Mustang with the drive, you know, to like drive yeah. out or something. But I told him to get a t-shirt made or something. Get you know what it is? I'm, I'm just caught up in the, I'm more caught up in the game than, you know, caught up into. He'll say whatever comes to his head. Trust me. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what, George? Like, I, Ford Fusion kind of like rolls off the tongue. So yeah. It really does. I'm, 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 I'm that. That. Thank yeah, you. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you Mary. Thank uh, you for defending my George. argument. I got you. I got you. <laughs> all right. All right. So let's get back. Let's get back to the talking about trying to be positive trying to be happy um do you have someone that you share that with by any chance is there you know another the partner in your life a girlfriend wife boyfriend? yeah i uh my beautiful fiance her name is rita awesome um we actually have been together 12 years hey, hey, <laughs> that's a long time. <laughs> yeah right. 12 years uh She's my fiance, and people make fun of us for this too. But we've been engaged for like six years. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with that. Ain't, Ain't nothing, nothing wrong with that. With that. No, nothing wrong. Hey, twenty twenty screwed every, all everybody's plans up. Yeah, I mean, yeah. So it, we yeah, have to like. Time you'll know. You know, you just you'll just know. 
So yeah, absolutely. I mean, it feels like we're married. It's <laughs> <Right. paper. Yeah. laughs> so, true, true. After twelve years, yeah. Right, crazy. So anything without putting it out there, are you, are you like those kind of people that like do the anniversaries and like to go on big dates? Are you just like chill at home, watching Netflix, Disney Plus, Laker games, whatnot? Or a little. Um, I know you like. I, I do all that too on a yeah. regular. <laughs> <laughs> Netflix and uh, okay. Laker games on a regular. That's everyday life. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, I am like, I am kind of corny. And you guys will get to know me and, and know that. <laughs> um, I, I'm i a hopeless romantic. <laughs> uh, I actually, yeah, I, I, I did like a 100 month like anniversary okay. surprise for her. <laughs> A <laughs> hundred month anniversary. Hold up. Right. Let me get a paper and pen. <laughs> well, old school here. Let me put and that I, on the to, like, I was like <laughs> literally like doing the math. Like, okay, I wanted to make sure this is right. I forget how I forgot like what how many years and months. I like, I can't do that math right now. But yeah, surprise her. I got a little hundred balloons. That's awesome. Um, and like a little cheesecake that said happy one hundred months and she was like, what is this? I was like, I don't know. I about. Made it up. <laughs> wow. That, <laughs> crazy. Months. That's I, crazy. I think I could be that, that type of person to do that. That takes a lot of thought, too. Like, hundred. what's something people don't usually do that I want to do special for us? You know, <laughs> yeah. Cool. All right. Yeah. So, like I said, I, I'm a little, I'm a little cheesy. <laughs> hey, that's cool. That's, hey, that's cool. cool. You know, I, I'm kind of like that, too. No, I mean, <laughs> whether key. you're straight, you know, straight, gay, whatever, it doesn't matter. They need more of this, the way that you are. You know, hey, I love who I love. I'm going to show her that I love her, but in a special way. You know, something random right. that people just don't know. You know, me, I was more like sporadic trip. Hey, we're home. Let's go to world. Let's go. Let's go to San Diego. Let's go to a play. You know, I love plays. So let's just go to a play. Oh, yeah, yeah. Stuff like that. And it's stuff you'll remember, you know. That's, I mean, money comes and goes. But when you get to go to like random cool trips just sporadically out of nowhere, yeah. people remember that, you know, or something special. Yeah, yeah like that 100 month thing. That's freaking cool. Three more years, you're at 15. Are we going to do you thinking anything huge for 15? Maybe a cruise by oh the end? Oh, my God. <laughs> and then, I'm not yeah, going to think about 15, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's three more years. Okay, I got three years to think about it. And then, I, then you guys can give me like hints we'll or like points. Okay. Or you guys give me ideas. All right. That, oh, I'll definitely that's give you that. ideas. I'll give you like a list of ideas. Okay, there you go. I'll give you a list. <laughs> but then like, yeah, like I was saying like on our last show, like tomorrow's not a promise. So like whatever is in front of you, whatever chance you get, you got to take advantage of it because like once something happens, like you just mm -hmm. can't get it back. So <laughs> it's some really important yeah. to take like certain risks. So wow, that's, that's what that's I like deep. about you. For sure. Dang, wow. you're getting this with the wow. deep stuff in the morning. Wow. <laughs> the morning. Wow. We're not even 30 oh, minutes man. in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, you know, that was cool. I gotta I'm not it. always the goofy person. With well, <laughs> with that said, what he just said about you know approaching every day, um, I found a quote on your Insta too, a, a quote and then a, a saying. Your one quote that I absolutely loved was, "You miss 100% of the shots that you don't take." And then I love, 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 love the "we is greater than I" thing that you had. I mean, can you explain those two quote, the quote and the symbolization and what they mean to you? Yeah, well, I mean, I think it was Wayne Gretzky that said it, right? You, you said a great one. Of the shots you don't take. Yeah, right. <laughs> one of like goats. Um, and that's always like that's. I always kind of like start with basketball, but it, it always leads into just life in general. Mm -hmm. You know, like you got to take the risk, and you know, if you you don't take it, you never know. Like what's Really what bad. could happen you know like i think um uh, one of the worst feelings to have is regret mm -hmm. you no, know in no. life and just mm -hmm. that's kind of the way i mean obviously you want to be mindful of the decisions you make mm -hmm. but you know you got to take some type of risk in life to reap the reward absolutely and uh, yeah um and the we is greater than i Mm -hmm. 
I've always just been a team player. I, I actually uh, – Yeah, we saw that on the court. <laughs> <laughs> like, she's throwing them Tom Brady touchdown passes <laughs> for Courtney. Oh, no, 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 no. What did we say? What did we say, That's George? One of my favorite things to do. George, what did we say? Oh, get that girl a Packers jersey. Go get that girl a Packers jersey. Because, <laughs> you know, Aaron Rodgers. Oh, speaking of jersey. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, if you don't want to play there, you know, I got yeah. a good arm. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Endorsement at um, the Packers. You heard her. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> well, you got Aaron Rodgers. Green Bay. Call that Green Bay. <laughs> no, I'll give you a jersey. I have no problem with that at at all. Like, I will give you a jersey. If you tell me, like, hey, George, like, I think I'm oh, like, yeah. oh, a yeah. jersey. Like, I'll actually make that for you. Um, oh, okay. Hey, all right. Hey, we'll yeah. link up after. <laughs> yeah, we'll link up. We'll link up. Like, hit me on my DMs. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah. But yeah, it. I actually used to be in Taekwondo, and it was Whoa. like a one person. Yeah. We have another connection. Like a one person. Sure. So that's awesome. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, it was like a one person sport, and I always felt like awkward, like. In camera. <laughs> like, <laughs> where, where are my teammates? Like, what? Oh <laughs> my yeah. here to help me. <laughs> yeah. Um. So then when I got into basketball, it was like, okay, like I'm I'm the type of person on the court that yeah. it. If one of the girls shoots the three, I'm the first one. Like that's going in. Yeah. Like <laughs> I, I'm the biggest hype man for my team. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, what team I'm on? Really? Like, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm the one that's like, yep, she got that. She gonna make that, and um, yeah. So yeah, that's, it's always that's, it's always about the. I team was gonna say that's who me. I am. What was that, George? Same. You cut out. Please. No, I said like I'm exactly what she. No, I, I was I was saying that's exactly what like what she said. I'm like that. Like I'm always hyping people up. I'm I know. Always, like, the right player. Whoever is like the hot man, like I'm looking for that person. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah, I'm like absolutely. that person. Exactly. Yeah, George. I'm more yeah. I'm more demonstrative. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on, the, on the same boat, do you since you're the leader, one of the leaders on the team? You know, you're hype and you're hype and you're hype and but you're also helping at the same time. You still have that coach mentality, right? Yeah. I, I think um I, I try to be, you know, mm -hmm. for sure. Um on the running team, since I'm the oldest, they they kinda look to me for guidance and I'm I'm the one that's like, Hey guys, like keep shooting. If we miss it, keep shooting. Like if you don't shoot it, you don't know if it's gonna go in, which Ooh, leads like back that. to the first quote. Um so yeah, I'm I'm always trying to be positive, um, and then always trying to have fun. I'll roast the girls on the on the court too. <laughs> like my teammate couldn't catch the ball on Thursday. I was like, man, Gina's on a struggle bus today. <laughs> Don't throw her the ball. Don't throw her the ball. No, but yeah. it's fun, you know. And and then when you radiate that positivity, you know, hopefully the universe mm -hmm. reciprocates that. I like that too. I like that. You guys just heard that quote. I love that. <laughs> um, okay, back back to the court really quick though. Before we get sure. into the, the whole positive life thing, which I get in that vibe. I got that vibe from you when I first saw you before we even talked. Because <laughs> I, I, George, I'm like, man, who's that number three right there? She's badass, you know. She's like, when you were making for the highlight video that we put out, like, which is on YouTube, YouTube.com, all, all sports media team, check it out. Um, but you were just killing it. But you were also, you know, like you said, the hype girl. You were there for your your girls the entire time, so I thought that was awesome. But girl, your three game is really strong. This Thursday I took a little, took a little nap a little bit, but the week before you're killing it. And usually when I see you, you're, you're slaying it with threes. Do you feel more comfortable with the threes, or is that your your big game, or are you more of like a layup kind of girl? What, what's your strength? Strength. I'm not gonna say weakness because I don't want to put that out there. What's your strength? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know. Man, when you get older, your game has to evolve a little bit, you know? Like, you can't do the things that you used to do, you know, when you got them young legs. And me and Courtney was actually talking about it before the game. Because I used to do some crazy layups. <laughs> I could tell. I could tell. Yeah, I, back in the day, I used to have a little more hang time. So, you know, I get to the rim and try to go one way and try to go another way, like, all in the air. Um, when you get people. older, you're like, you jump up and you're quick to come down. <laughs> so it don't work that well anymore. So, you know, I try to stay out by the three point line. <laughs> okay. It's so that, safer you back. know, <laughs> yeah. it's safer yeah. over here. I don't gotta run into nobody. <laughs> I got you. I used to be a catcher for eight years, so I totally know what you're talking about. So it's <laughs> yeah. all good in the hood, trust me. 
Um, yeah. Okay. Since we're talking about, all right, we'll jump off the court for a little bit. You're a big kid at heart. I get that vibe from you just right now. You're smiling, you're laughing, you're just having a good time. You're a big Disney nut from what I see as well. So are you excited to go back to Disneyland or do you guys have any tickets yet or what's the deal with that? Yeah, dude, I'm super excited. Um, we haven't gotten our tickets yet because it's just been busy. It's been kind of crazy in my life, you know, work and other, you know. I hear you. Um, and then it's just hard to get tickets right now. <laughs> yeah. But it's gonna be fun. Opening day was yesterday. Yeah. I heard staff and like some of the people yeah. emotional about reopening. It's oh, you have no you idea. just feel like such good vibes going to Disneyland. It brings yeah. the kid, you know, out of you again. So you, um, yeah. me and my fiance love going. Oh uh, yeah, I saw I saw some of your pictures and you were just going all crazy. You probably were there when I worked there. I worked there from oh eight to twelve in Tomorrowland Ride. So and I absolutely oh. loved it. I met my son's mom there. Um, uh, Nemo, I worked Star Tours is my favorite. Absolutely love working Star Tours. And it, it, when you go to, di- it's kind of like being on a basketball team. It, you go in as the new person, you're going to do something, you're going to do a job, you're going to do, and it ends up being a family. Like I said, I met my son's mom. Sure. I yeah. have lifelong friends that I have now. Like it's been, I, 2000, damn, 2012. It's been almost 20, it's been a long time since I've been there. You just know <laughs> as a worker, as a worker, you just a worker. A, but you just know, an OG. once a CM, always a CM, you know, just like once a baller, always a baller, you know, it's like, yeah. it, that's why you, when you brought up the emotional thing, I'm like, I was, I cried on my last day. Like I didn't want to, yeah. you know, and, and God had other plans for me, obviously. Um, but, and you never know what those plans are going to be. He has his reasons for everything. Like you said, no regrets, you know, and right. life in general. That's what it's about. But it's going to be cool, though, because it's only at 25% capacity. So when you do get those tickets, the lines aren't going to yeah. be that bad. So you should Yeah, for sure. I, I was actually at um, Touch of Disney uh, for the little food festival thing uh, oh, not too long back. ago. Oh, my friend went to yeah. that. How was What's that? I said my friend went to that. He was telling me about it. I'm like, yo, like, where'd, uh, where'd you guys go to Disneyland for? Because, like, at first, like, I thought Disneyland was open when he went. But then, like, he told me, oh, there was, like, some... Like, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, it's just like where you go and just eat and drink all day. <laughs> it's a good hey, time. No, that's cool. Hey, you know, yeah. she had a great time. I had a great time. <laughs> <laughs> One thing about me is I love food. Hey, I, you're in the right group. Like, here. Yeah, I'm here. I play basketball and work out so I can eat as much as I want. <laughs> okay. I'm so you're just like me. Time. Hey, me and you <laughs> are like best friends. Yeah. Like, yes. oh man, we be laughing, joking around, roasting people. Yeah. yeah. Eating yeah. food. Eating some food. With that said, we got to bring it up. What's your go-to meal? For, uh, let's say, meal? pre-game meal and post-game meal. Oh, Ooh. man. Ricky, I never heard that question before. Well, she's no. never said it. Dude, pre-game meal in college, like all they fed you was pasta. <laughs> like, here, pasta. Load up, load up on pasta. <laughs> okay. And like then, no prepping. Yeah, and then after like um wind down after the games, they would get us pizza. So okay, I'm all fucked well, out on pasta and pizza, right? Yeah, so she got that Italian thing going. Okay. So with that yeah. said, but, Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. No, you go. I was going to say, now, now it's a little different. Uh, now you got to eat a salad before. <laughs> <laughs> you, can't eat, you can't eat, you know, too close to game time. Cause then you yeah, know. right. You go for a layup. Oh, yeah. Like, explode when you yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> well, it's a little, it's a little your energy down. All right, right. but we got to, yeah, sure. you, you brought up pizza. And there's always that debate. I'm going to say, what's your favorite topping? And then I'm going to ask you the pineapple question. Yes or no for pineapple. <laughs> and what's your what's your topping of choice okay i mean yes on, yes on pineapples why not i don't, I don't know why okay look Ricky, like why it. not though george what about oh, you you're pineapple? a texture eater you're a what you're a texture eater you don't kind like that yeah kind of in your mouth. yeah yeah so okay and then the what is pineapple your go-to or what's your go-to um you know what i um I like, I love spicy food. So oh. I'm always like sausage oh, yeah. and all the things. I can't take spicy. See, I love really? love, I love meat lovers all, all day, every day. Yeah. So <laughs> mine has uh, some type of jalapenos on it. So sausage jalapenos, pepperoni jalapenos. You know, it's so funny. I'm Put part, everything on there. <laughs> I'm part Puerto Rican and I can't 
touch a jalapeno. Not on my nachos, not on my... What? I don't know. I don't know. I, I can't think of... I got to think of Puerto Rican car. You're part Latino, <laughs> man. Car. No. Ricky, you're part <laughs> Latino. You can't take that? Come I on, bro. Yeah. It is... I don't know. I don't know. If, again, I don't know if it's the texture, but or if it's the spice. Because I eat some spicy salsas with chips and stuff, um, or certain like burritos, depending on where you go. You know, I can handle it. Yeah. I just, I don't know. Maybe like you said, maybe it's texture. I have no idea. So it's not my thing. <laughs> yeah, I'm like the spicier, the better. Like okay, sweating. Like I'll I'll keep eating like ghost peppers. <laughs> like I love ghost peppers. Okay, do you eat them straight up? Do you eat them straight up? I haven't had them straight up, but like oh, hot sauces good. with them in it. Okay. I don't know. My neighbor used to grow peppers and they would just eat them straight up. And I'd be like, my room, like, oh my God, are you kidding me? Or those ones <laughs> on YouTube, the, 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 you said the super hot ghost pepper or that chip, that one chip that's like, oh, the one chip in the world. Like, you guys are, I don't get it. You guys are nuts. My ex, <laughs> son, my son. I don't know either. Yeah. My son's mom. Oh, what was that buffalo? What was that Buffalo Wild Wings um, wings? You know those spicy wings that people like to try? To oh, it's, like it's like blazing. Or have, you guys, like that. have you guys have you guys done blazing, that before? Yeah. Blazing, and then you um, yeah. Challenge, yeah. Would you I'm do that? Sure I could do it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I, I could it. do it, but I I never tried it. Okay, well we gotta. Uh, Ricky, I'm time. gonna I'm going down there. We're gonna yeah, go to Buffalo see. Wild Wings, and then we're gonna have a test and see like how long she'll last right. eating those buffalo. There, wings. we'll take you on behalf of all sports media team. We'll hook up. I'll take you to the Whittier one right here. That one's really cool. Okay, that hey, you guys really heard cool. that? They're taking me. I'll take her. I'll take her. Yes, I, I go there. Yeah, all I'll the take time. her too. I go there all the time. But you gotta come down because she's by me. You got oh, no, I'm, I'm jumping yeah. down. <laughs> hey, just okay. let me know when, what <laughs> time I'm right. driving down Georgia there. Georgia Georgia. Georgia. And we could catch a Laker game. For sure. And we could catch a Laker game, too. There it's you tough. go, like a yeah. playoff game. We hear it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hey, we're, we're planning this. We're planning this. We're I'm putting in a group sure, chat. Yeah. We're for putting sure. in a group chat. It's going to be like an all sports media hangout. <laughs> and then we're going to try some it. spicy food. We'll get Just yeah. to see if she's really telling the truth. We'll do, we'll do a know, remote while we're in the chat. We'll do a quick remote. We're going to do a remote challenge. Exactly. Okay, remote I'm down for that, too. Yeah, MJ is – MJ, man, MJ is down for any type of – I'm down. Yeah, she's down for anything. I'm down. Not challenge. I love <laughs> that. I love it. Uh, Mamba mentality, baby. <laughs> now, as she drinks the Laker mug, yes. Perfect timing. That was like a, a promotion best friend right there. Man, Damn, drink it. That was great. Um, okay, again, you guys are listening to uh, All Sports Media Team for Double Dribble, episode 43. And Mary MJ Haas, the clutch Cambodian, who's not really Cambodian, but it's what we call it because it works. So we're having an awesome time. You're freaking hilarious. And we're going to keep going. We, um, I want to jump onto the fashion game a little bit. Right now you're, you're rocking the hoodie. But when you go out, it's a little different, right? Do you do like, you got the, I always see you in jeans. I saw you got, do you do the torn jeans or what's yeah. the jean game going for MJ? um honestly my fashion game is just like what whatever I like you know like I like whatever you feel at the moment right I take pride in like not having to spend a lot of money like (laughs) and still making it look good you know yeah like I think the only thing I spend a lot of money on is shoes I'm kind of a sneakerhead I'm not extreme like some people but you know I got a few pairs here and there um I spend a lot of money on hats too, so shoes and hats. But other than that, you know, like, like I'll literally find a shirt at like Kohl's. Whatever. And what's your favorite? And what's your favorite shoes to wear? Like, what's your go-to shoes that you like Hello. to wear? Oh, oh. Again, favorite shoes: cement force all day, every day. Cement force. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Cool. All right. I'm the same way. I wear jerseys. I wear, I like silly shirts, like cartoonish type shirts sometimes. Or yeah. like when I work at the rock station, I have like 10 different rock groups, you know? So right. it's always, it's always. Um, I actually, I have a bunch of Laker jerseys too. Okay. Like I got Brandon Ingram jerseys. Like I got Lonzo Ball jerseys. <laughs> like they don't oh. even play on the team anymore. You might want to take like, that Lonzo Ball jersey back. Uh, well, Ingram's not there either, bro. 
Come on now. I know, but like I'm I'm just saying like Ingram is an all an actual all star. Uh, right. Oh, they ain't hating on Lonzo. I'm not. I'm just I'm saying. Like, I'm just telling the I'm truth. I love okay. Him. I love Lonzo Ball, but he's just not a superstar that we thought that we he should be. Yeah, now he's, I mean, he's absolutely outshining him too. Because like you know how like yeah. his dad kept on like hyping his um guys up saying like oh he's better than Steph Curry. Oh, he does that, bro. That his dad does yeah. that, bro. He he does that because he has to because he's he's the dad, you know. <laughs> I know that. Like I know all dads think like that. Like I understand that, but like he's more public with these. But he also was a player. You guys remember he was a player. And the average two point two points per game. He's a showman, bro. You get to tell that's yeah. why you get from He's him. a showman. Come on, M- MJ could beat him one. MJ could beat him one on one. All right, we're gonna make that happen. I'm gonna tag him. I'm gonna tag him on Insta. We're gonna that, before we that oh, we're, we're gonna do that, and then we're gonna go to B Dubs after. So there All you right, go. Let's do it. Let's, do it. <laughs> let's make it happen. No, honestly, can I say something about Lonzo? No, I think his game's a little underrated. Um, like he's his, shooting his, pretty good. He's shooting pretty good. But sometimes it's not about the scoring. Like so he sometimes he can control the tempo. Like he'll he'll make those outlet passes. You know, like I went when I got a little bit older and I started when he came on the Lakers. I started watching him. Like okay, like he's hitting ahead and that actually makes a big difference in a mm-hmm. game. They're like driving the ball mm-hmm. up and you know waiting for the defense. And not playing to that half court. You try to set. catch them off guard. Yeah, yeah exactly. Mm-hmm. You, yeah. you hit ahead and. I appreciate this game. Go ahead, Lonzo. I see you. There you go. Lonzo, we see you, Lonzo. You're, you're still there. I, I just, I just don't think Lonzo has has not reached his potential yet. I think we need to get. I think we need to get, Jordan. We need to get Jordan, Mr. Baller over here, do a one on one with Lonzo. Then he can see. There you go. Yeah. Then George. No, this is yeah. to Lonzo, but I'll, I'll kill him. Oh, he's backtracking now. <laughs> I'll, I'll, ki- I'll kill him. I'm not yeah. backtracking. Yeah, I'm confident. Okay. Like I'll, I'll kill him on the court. Oh, oh not so tagging him now. I am so tagging him. <laughs> oh, wow, that just happened. Wow. See, you never know what's going to happen on this show, MJ. I'm telling you. You never know what's going to come up. We never know what we're going to talk about. It's crazy. <laughs> it's freaking like, you hear what George said? Like, oh, it's happening. Okay. Tag, I'm putting my note. Tag Lonzo. Tag Lonzo. Oh, it's happening. Tag him. I'm totally tag tagging him. Oh, all right. Um, before we get too crazy, because we have our silly questions coming up, believe it or not, these aren't all our silly questions. Um, we got the two serious things I want to talk about, especially in the last couple of years. It's just been bananas. Let's just put it that way. We'll start with BLM. You're a big BLM advocate. I know you got a lot of BLM um, sisters on your team and in your league. Um, talk to me how you feel about BLM and just uh, the situation in general. We don't get political on this show, so you go where right. we want to go with it. And then we can, you know, I have, I'm not African-American, but I am a minority. And, you know, I got George over here who has actually family, you have family in Africa, right, George, you were saying? Yes, I Nigeria. do. So in Niro- in Nairobi. That's Nairobi. That's pretty freaking cool. So we just want to see where you stand on the situation. Yeah. I mean, just how can you not, you know, fight against the injustice that's going on right now. Like, just, if it bugs you to say that Black Lives Matter, like, you should probably really look inside yourself and see why that bugs you. So, Mm -hmm. like, how can you not advocate for, Mm -hmm. you know, people who are getting mistreated? I agree. But also, with that said, you know, you being a minority as well, does it bother you when people put all lives matter you know or like me on some of my stuff i put blm and then alm because i have a lot of other minority friends i have friends that are cops but i've also my friend got killed by a cop because he had a mental instability you can look it up on google uh jonathan salcedo um in whittier and he got uh he was a paranoid schizophrenic and he's 20 like 22 i don't mean to steal your thunder here but he got pinned down by like six by like multiple cops and they didn't almost almost the whole George Floyd situation they pinned him down they wouldn't let him up and he suffocated while his mom was coming to get him she saw him die you know like something like that that that's where the bad apples are you know and it's like you know the the cliche the cliche out there is not all blacks are criminals not all cops are racist which is true to an extent on both ends you know because all minorities get in trouble and then all cops you know not all cops are bad but then again not all cops are good so but there's there's like you can't 
you can't have bad apples in certain. I agree. <laughs> you know? No, I agree. Uh, I like, agree. You, you can't you have do. like a bad apple that that flies a plane and, and is a pilot. No, like I you agree. can't have a bad apple in in certain occupations. You know, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. the just the police force. There's just has to be better training. There has to be better. I agree. Psychological. It needs yeah. a lot yeah. of reform yeah. right now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you know like um to go back on your question like of course all lives matter you know like um like i said it's just any kind of injustice you want to fight against but all lives won't matter in, until black lives matter that's true you exactly. know and i get what you're saying no, i totally get what you're saying yeah and it's like you know i i totally understand like i have friends who are cops um female cops and you know they get treated a certain way too and it's just the whole you know like we just need to as you know us as a country we just need to just be better you know mm-hmm. um i agree, I agree. military gotta, the same way i've heard yeah it's just like there's, mm-hmm. there's yeah it's just like there's this culture you know in the police department that's just you know I've I've just heard terrible stories about people going in with bad intentions to become cops. And yeah, that's not okay. You, that that's not okay. And that's not okay. Yeah. It really is. And it's like you're going in. Like, how how, how can you not, you know, advocate against that? Like, we the we need change for our our future for our next generation. Like this this all this stuff can't just keep going on. You know, mm-hmm. this is not okay. No, I yeah, because like then again, like we're just setting a bad example for the young generation on how like life should be, but we shouldn't be living lives like that. Like mm-hmm. our young kids shouldn't be living the life that we're living. They should be living the life like in the future where like there's a lot of positivity. But, but unfortunately there isn't, but um yeah. in some cases there isn't, but you know. Unfortunately there's not. I totally you just got you know <clears throat> George it's just crazy. Have you, I'm you being a minority, did you ever get the talk from, you know, your dad or your uncle that, hey, when you go out, don't wear the hoodie, don't, don't go in this place, don't go in this place, because I know I got that talk. My dad gave me that talk. He's like, if a cop comes I mean, to like, yeah, to some, yeah. And stuff, and it, you shouldn't have to live that way. Yeah, in some extent, like, um, I'll tell you, like, a quick story about me and the cops. So, um, this happened during my college career. Like, I was, like, a junior. Mm-hmm. So, I play – I also play basketball, too, NJ. But um, I was playing an intramural game. So, I did have, like, a gray hoodie. And I had, like, basketball shorts because I was uh, coming from a game. So, I, think I live right down the street. Yeah, so I live right down the street from the gym that I usually go to or where like um, basketball, the basketball league was taking place. So it was me and this um, Filipino girl, you know, we were just playing, we were just um, racing down the street, like nothing malicious happened. Like we were just, we were just friends. So um, when you go down the street, you pass the uh, police station. So we, I see like three cop cars rolling the opposite direction where I was rolling. And then that third cop, flashes lights at me saying like yo like um uh, like who are you i'm like oh i'm a student here at ucr so i showed them my id they questioned me saying like hey like when were you born and then like i had to tell them all that so like then they let me go saying like hey like you're free to go we thought you matched the description of a black criminal and I'm like, are you freaking serious right now? Mm -hmm. So I'm surprised, but not surprised. You know what I mean? Like I'm, you know, yeah. So it was, it was like a crazy um, night that I had to go through, but it's just one of those things, like you said, that things are not always, you know, what we want them to be. And unfortunately we have to like live with it and roll with the punches. Mm -hmm. Wow. It just sucks to me that like, like us as minorities, like we, like there's so many of us that have those kinds of stories, you know, and it shouldn't be like that. Mm-hmm. It really shouldn't. And like, like a little kid is, like you can't, like a little kid is not safe, like just shooting the ball in front of his driveway. And then when the cop comes, like he has to hide behind a tree to make sure he doesn't get seen by the cop. That's how, yeah. that's how crazy it is that we're living. 
Yeah, it's a sad, it's a sad world right now. And we're trying to make it, you know, like you said, uh, MJ, you're just trying to make it better as much as you, as much as you can in any way that you can. L- little things go a long, long way, you know, whether it's, yeah. you know, it's a, a friend who's in depression, depression. I just lost a friend to depression on Thursday, um, tw- uh, 35 years old, you know, and it's just things like that. And then you never know who's struggling because it's usually the happiest people that are struggling the most. So you always want to reach out to people on the homeless. Homeless is unbelievably crazy right now. You know, the best thing you can do for a homeless vet is, you know, buy them a burger, buy them a drink, tell them God bless you, you know, you know, say a prayer. They love that, you know, or if you, the restaurants are open, take them in. You know, I did that when I was in Redlands. I used to do that all the time because of Jack and Bob right down the street from the station. And, you know, I take them in, grab a burger, and they have such cool stories. You never know who you're going to help, how, what you're going to hear what they've been through. Maybe you're the only person they've talked to and God knows how long, you know, so just be and I can relate to. Go ahead. And I can relate to that story, Ricky, because um, during my, my sophomore year, me, me and a few, um, few friends, like we went down to Skid Row. So we saw like a bunch of homeless people. And then what we did was like, we have a band that uh, played the guitar, sing a song for them. And then we have food prepared for them. And then like a bunch of people were happy that we're bringing them food, bring them some water. Mm-hmm. And it was actually a pretty fun time. So I actually um, enjoyed doing it. I was kind of skeptical, skeptical, honestly, because like that's something I've never even done. Well, but once I started doing it, like it actually, it was actually, it actually felt like pretty it. good helping other people. Nothing out. like it. We did the, remember we did the pillow drive with the Oxford Orcas and yeah, that too. If you guys do any, anything else like that, like hit me up. Like, oh, no, I want to sure. do that stuff too. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Because, sure. because we're going to, for sure. Was a, that was actually sure pretty cool. Time. We're going to be doing it. I know that. We'll probably be doing something again. Um, but us in general, our show, we can definitely put something together, especially at where we live, MJ. We got all kinds of homeless people over here. They don't yeah, for sure. This area, for sure. Um, so just be better, you guys. Be out there. Just be better in any way that you can. Throw a smile at somebody. You know, we can't give hugs right now. Almost. Um, <laughs> throw a smile. Tell people God bless you. You know, it goes a long, long, long way. Um, okay. Yeah. So you're a huge advocate for BLM. You're also an advocate for LGBTQ. Um, Want to jump into that story a little bit if you're cool. Um, we asked Courtney the same thing. Um, when did you know? Um, how did you come out? And how did that go about with like family and stuff? Um, I I guess I've always known. Okay. Like, <laughs> but growing up, you know, you're just labeled as oh, you're just a tomboy. You're just a tomboy. So I didn't really like know know <laughs> until I got older, because uh, you know, like I said, like we were first generation here, like straight from a third world country here so I didn't was never really around that growing up I didn't know what it was that these feelings were um like attraction just Mm -hmm. to girls (laughs) and it's like all my guy friends were like oh they're just my friends you know those Mm -hmm. are my homies like I I was like one of the little boys (laughs) Mm -hmm. so um it wasn't until like high school where I was around it more um there's a huge population in women's basketball um, for whatever reason, maybe just women's sports in general. Um, and that's when I was like, oh, okay, like this is what it is. This is what I'm feeling like. Um, and then uh, she was my best friend at the time, told me like, oh, I think I have feelings for you. And I was like, oh, I guess I have feelings for you. Too. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I guess. Um, and then after that, uh, I actually came out to my sister first. Okay. Um, for her, I don't think it was like, mm-hmm. oh, you're gay. It was like, why didn't you tell me? Tell me a long time ago, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You should have told me a long time ago. I was like, I didn't even know. Yeah. <laughs> um, my brother was really cool, really supportive. He was like, hey, if you like this, like, it's cool. Like, I'm your brother. Um, my brother is actually the one that got me into basketball. Okay. He taught me at a young age. He's a huge Laker fan too. Um, yeah, he was, you know, basketball player, football player, all that too in high school. Um, so um, he was always very supportive of everything that I did. Um, and I guess my parents just always knew. Mm-hmm. Like 
we we don't really talk about it um but they know i mean i've been with my fiance 12 years they know yeah. <laughs> we have a house I together mean... yeah they know <laughs> um and they love her uh so i just hope for the next generation like my nieces and nephews i have a bunch of them mm-hmm. that um that they like your sexual orientation is just like a normal thing i hope it becomes just like a normal thing where you don't have to come out you know like mm-hmm. like you guys didn't have to come out like hey guys guess what i'm straight like you guys didn't <laughs> have to do that you know like mm-hmm. because when when i had when i came out to my sister i felt like i was doing something wrong because i didn't know like what well, her reaction was going to be like you know if she was mad at me it's like am i feeling uh, the way i'm feeling is it wrong you know i was questioning myself and doubting myself and i don't want mm-hmm. you know my nieces and nephews to feel like yeah you know if they're naturally feeling a certain way mm-hmm. that they're doing something wrong like yeah. i just want them and the next generation just to like you know be your true self and yeah you know no. find happiness and just being your true self and you know when i ask them like hey like so what's going on are you talking to a guy or a girl like i i just leave it open you know i yeah. don't automatically think that like, my nephew mm-hmm. has a girlfriend you yeah know? You don't automatically think that. yeah and you know what yeah. bothers me sometimes is you know i'm a, I'm a reporting in christian and I don't like when certain Christians are just like, I'm not going to talk to this person because they're homosexual or they're transsexual or they're pansexual or whatever it is. I worked at Disneyland for five years. I had uh-huh. a of homosexual friends and I'm cool with all of them. You know, one of them has a family of seven, you know, yeah. and they're great guys, you know, and I would say, you know, whether it's, you know, you know, um, like how people, schools wear uniforms, you know, the uniform doesn't make the person. Same thing here. The sexuality doesn't make a person. My son's grandma on my on his mom's side is homosexual, you know, and she's you know she's a pretty cool person. You know, we have our differences obviously, but she treats him good. You know, she's she's his grandma. You know, and that's how I see her. I'm like, I'm not gonna see her any other way. You know, and right. it is what it is. You know, and people are gonna live yeah. their life the way they want. And you know, there's like you're amazing. You're awesome. You know, you're super respectful. <laughs> you're friendly. You know, and that's all you need to be to make the world a better place. Yeah, you know, and she has a nice smile too. Look at uh, that. Yeah, we threw that out. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I love uh, it. But I mean, honestly, it's just like it doesn't matter what you know who my partner is or mm-hmm. what I do in my personal life. Like, I just try to be a good person, and mm-hmm. you know, just like I said, just try to give out positive vibes, and hopefully, the universe gives me positive vibes Absolutely. back. Absolutely. With that said, I mean. You got guys and girls both coming out younger and younger in age, and a lot of them have families that are not supportive of it. And they're very, some get violent, some just kick them out. I used to work at a school, I can talk about this now, but George knows the story. I used to work at after school program, Think Together. You know Think Together. I I can't work Think Together for years. And I had this one girl out in Tustin, she was 12 years old, I still remember her. Not gonna drop her name, but she was 12. And she knew, she knew she was going to, she wanted to come out and she, she would talk to me about it because she wasn't comfortable about talking to her family about it. And, you know, certain things a leader is, is obligated to tell the family, this is not one of them. So I was like, well, you should, you know, tell your mom. She's like, my mom is so traditional. She'll beat me. She'll throw me out. Cause you know, I don't want to, I'm Latino. So I could say it, the typical Latino, Hey, traditional, traditional Catholic boy and girl, you know? And she was scared and she became suicidal. And I pray to the Lord above that she's still alive right now, you know, with all the stuff she was telling me. And it's sad that these kids are going through something like this. So with that said, what advice would you give to boy or girl that are scared to come out to their family? Um, I would, I would say, you know, do it whenever you're ready on your own time but know that there's a whole community that's behind you. Uh, However, your feeling is not wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, you're allowed to have feelings. You're allowed to have these types of feelings. And like I said, there's a whole community behind you. Like you're not alone in this, but do everything on your own time. And there's a lot of uh, resources out there. Mm -hmm. You know, unfortunately, if a family doesn't accept you, and kicks you out or whatever you know there's 
there's group homes, there's a lot of resources out there that are um, willing and able to, mm -hmm. to help anybody in those kinds of situations. And um, also with your mental health, you know, like everybody has, you know, feelings and stuff that they need to let out and there's resources for, you know, kids especially yeah. to talk mm -hmm. to. And there's nothing wrong with, you know, seeking help and, and talking you know to somebody about how you're feeling or mm -hmm. the things that you go through that are traumatizing absolutely you know coming out and having a parent not accept you for who you truly are when that's all you're trying to be in life is just be your true self um that's traumatizing you know and that affects your mental health and you know there are resources out there that um that you have that can help mm -hmm. Wow. Now, I love the fact that you gave out all those, um, the phone, you think about the numbers, but you give out, you know, hey, there's a helpline here. There's a helpline here. Because someone, I would say this when I feel that this part of the show hit, someone watching this is going to be affected by what you just said. Someone's life is going to change by what you just said, whether they're a 12 year old teenager or an 80 year old who's finally coming out, you know, like, that, or even not even just that, just something in general, you know, their feelings have been piling up for years and they're too scared to humble to come out with those feelings, not just romance feelings, but, you know, maybe they're in depression, maybe they're, you know, paranoid or maybe they just, they lost their loved one and they're just too scared to go out in the dating world, you know? So, I mean, I struggle with it myself. You know, I've been divorced almost five years and I've been on like one date since then, you know, and I, yeah. I struggle with um, <clears throat> that. I'm not, I've never been diagnosed, but I feel I struggle with a physical, like, not, I don't feel like I'm physically attracted. That's just me. That's just how I feel, you know, and you got to humble yourself and you got to be able to ask for help. And I love that you gave those numbers out. So enough being super serious. I told you we flip flop, Mary, MJ. We, flip -flop. <laughs> we go serious, we go silly. It's time to go silly again. Okay. All right. <laughs> we have what we do now, um, our final five questions. They're all still, they're not all silly, but they're nothing super serious. They're actually fun. Um, and all then right. we do our final question that we usually do. So um, do I'll, let, I'll let George pop in with the first one. Um, go for it, dude. All right. All right, MJ. First of all, thank you for coming to our show. Um, we're glad you to have me. you on. Um, we know how much of a great person you are, and you really showed it on the court. But I'll digress. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> so um, I ask everybody this question: What's your favorite mm -hmm. all-time basketball movie, and why? Mm -hmm. And what message um, would you get out of that movie? Ooh, you added that. Okay, I'm not going to give the typical answer of Space Jam and Love and Basketball and all that. Go I think ahead. everybody sleeps on these two movies. Juana Man and Like Mike. <laughs> like, come on. Yo, Like Mike, I love Like Mike. Like Mike was my favorite movie. Yeah, that was my um, favorite movie too. Yeah, and then Juana Man, like, I think we were talking about it on third. or I talked to somebody about that on Thursday. No, I talked to like somebody from XVX. So, you know, like we were just joking around. They were like, oh, like, George, you could be like Joanna, man. Because, like, I made a joke um, about like XBX saying, like, hey, you guys need like a player. Like, let me dress up like a girl. And then, like, yeah. someone said, like, oh, like, you could be like Joanna, man. Yeah. You know, make yourself like a woman. I'm like, you do it, George. Oh, okay. We'll just dress you up and bring you Oh, so, yeah. I was actually talking to Doc, Doc and her team about that. I think, well, was it Doc or was it somebody else on the team? But, anyways, it, it was a pretty funny conversation. That's funny. Yeah, uh, that, they always make fun of that movie because it's like, oh, this guy dressing up like a girl. But like that movie was the moral funny. of the, but the moral of the story, um, like you know, they they show women's basketball. They show how he thinks he's just like all this, but then at the end he becomes like team player. <laughs> you know we before i kind of thing so mm -hmm. it's it's underrated for sure definitely yeah. respect and you also did mention space jam so i have to bring this up um we always mm -hmm. ask especially since we know black italian alicia taylor who plays cash you know she's gonna be biased about black italian wait hold on black, 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 black italian, italian. Yeah, I love my black teammate italian. that's right she's, and she's gonna be biased about this question she's gonna be biased <laughs> about this i don't care It'll be, i know exactly <laughs> what she's gonna say 
But I know exactly. That's off, what I'm saying. It's funny because I just posted a video where I got these little Space Jam toys and I opened it and I got Taz and I'm like, oh my god! I think you guys saw it. I was like, oh my god, I got Taz! I'm like, Alicia, you have to sign this. So I'm actually going there to yeah. sign it for me. Um, anywho, I'm <laughs> stupid like that. I just, there you go. You're good now, by the way. Okay, check this. My question um, is: You're more around my era. I'm 36. So um, I'm 30, and I'm about to be 31. You're still um, a baby. In about three weeks. Still a baby. Um, yeah, Space Jam. I'm 33. So <laughs> you're still, there you go. Okay, so Space Jam. I always ask people: Do you feel that the timing is good for Space Jam 2 with LeBron? Or do you feel we should have had a Space Jam 2, give or take, about 10 or 15 years ago with Kobe as a lead? Not being a Laker fan, just in general. What do you think? I think Kobe would have been, like, a terrific actor. Mm-hmm. Um, and, yeah, there should have been, like, one every error for, like, you know, Jordan. I, maybe I one even it. before that. <laughs> for for Magic. Magic is my guy, okay. too. That know? would have been interesting. Can you imagine the lineup yeah. in that movie? Oh my right. god. <laughs> yeah. That would have been um, great. But yeah, for sure. Like we should have been on like Space Jam 4 right now. Like they should have <laughs> they should have thought of they should have really thought about that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, we got we got a tag at WB on this one. Yeah, most definitely. Yeah, exactly. Okay, cool. That's a that's a cool answer. And I know you said Kobe, so um it, it was pretty cool also because when we interviewed Alicia, we I was under the impression it wasn't gonna be Monstar. I was told there wasn't going to be any Monstars, and I was super bummed because I loved the Monstars in the original. Yeah. Like, oh man, they got all these super cool superstars. Yeah. And she's like, no, 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 no. I can't tell you who they are, but there is going to be Monstars. And the kicker, which made it even better, because we're huge for female basketball, is they're going to have WNBA superstars in there also. I think that's I think I saw a leak about that, but I'm not going to say that. Uh, don't say that. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to say I don't know. Wait. July 16th. That's right. Yeah. It's coming quick. It's coming quick. It's we should coming have a viewing quick, party. Yeah. That would be cool. We should all. That would be cool. Yeah. That would be but all sports media should, be, should all come together and watch that. It would be cool. We could just go yeah. watch yeah. one of the theaters. And by then, hopefully, we could all go to Well, we can go to theaters now. We just have to, you know, step in the right by, by July, it's where it's full capacity anyway, supposedly. Yeah. So we'll see. We'll see what's up. All right. My turn. Okay. Um, motivation. You talked about your brother. You've talked about Kobe. Who was your main motivation growing up as a baller and as a person? Um, uh, it was always Kobe. <laughs> it was always Kobe was my motivation. Like, not, not really, like, how he played as far as, like, I didn't really um, try to replicate my game mm-hmm. because I, I love passing the ball, you know? Like, I always – would watch videos of Magic Johnson, you know, okay. but just Kobe came in at like how old is he? Eighteen, just like yeah, fearless. Yeah. And, like growing up, like that's I just I wanted to be fearless, just like him, and like everything I did, you know. Um, he had that Mamba mentality back then. He just didn't, you know, like trademark it yet. But yeah, that's that's what it was, and uh, it was always Kobe. But of course, you know, my family too, you know. Yeah. Um, Who is your big, your biggest from the family? Do you feel as your biggest supporter? Um, my biggest supporter is my brother for okay. sure. Shout out to my brother. Um, he's the one that taught me everything <laughs> mm-hmm. as far as like basketball. You know, he's the one that showed me like the Laker games and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but my sister too. My sister's not really that athletic, but she'd be out there. I'd be like, hey, come on, let's go play basketball outside, and she'll be out there. All right. You know, shooting and trying to play with me, even though I was better and I was like six years younger. <laughs> there you go. Um, yeah. Um, and you know, of course, my my parents. But um, yeah, uh, my brother was the one that was like mm-hmm. at every game, you know, recording, okay. telling me like, "Hey, you need to do this, you need to do that," and like I listened to him mm-hmm. for sure. All right, cool. I love it. All right, George, go for it. So I'm going to steal um, one of Ricky's questions I like to um, ask our guests. So um, so my question um, that Ricky would actually ask anybody was, who will be your bad five? No. Uh, so it could be any era, bit um, old five. or young. 
top five? Like, who's your top five? All right. I'm gonna do two, yeah. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do WNBA. I'm gonna do NBA. Oh yeah, w, oh, yeah. WNBA, WNBA or NBA? Yeah. So yeah, yeah WNBA I'm or NBA. I would say my my all fab five for WNBA is uh, Sue Bird. Okay. Um, Diana Taurasi. Okay. Cynthia Cooper. Ooh. She's like the goat. Cooper. Cynthia Cooper, man. And then Rebecca Lobo and okay. Leslie. Come on. I love your lineup. All right, and then, and then, uh, NBA. I'm gonna do the all Lakers NBA. <laughs> I got <laughs> it. Be the first. I got be the first. Wait, wait, wait. Which Lakers though? Which Lakers though? Oh, okay. So it's gonna be Magic. Okay. Magic, Kobe. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go LeBron, AD, and Shaq. There you go. Okay. Oh, whoa. She yeah. said Lakers, so you're like, you don't need to ask the Shaq question. Okay. He said Lakers. Usually we say which Shaq. Yeah, we just uh, say which Shaq. But I do oh, have a Lakers which Lakers Shaq. Lakers Shaq. I Lakers do. Shaq I, all day. Yeah, I like when Shaq was both pretty of them are freaking sick. And your WNBA one was really cool. A lot of names we haven't heard. Um, I do have a question though regarding the WNBA and the fact that they just changed their logo to Diana Taurasi. How do you feel about that? And do you feel it's warranted because she's amazing? Um, Diana Taurasi is like my female Kobe, like she's the goat. Like she's ridiculous. <laughs> like they should have changed. They should have just had her as a logo this whole time. <laughs> okay, and I got a follow up question to that, which I think you probably see where I'm going here. There's rumors that the NBA was going to do the same thing. We all know who was going to go on that logo. How would you yeah. feel if we changed to a Kobe Bryant logo? What would that mean to you? Um, that would mean everything to me. Like they, yeah, I think it's time for change. I think the hardest thing is to be like, all right, which Kobe pose are we going to use? <laughs> like that's yeah, the actually. hardest thing we got to do. Like we got to all, we should have a vote on like which one mm -hmm. it would be like that he has too many great poses. You know, Jordan got his like, you know, uh, yeah. jump man sign, but Kobe got yeah, way yeah. too many. Yeah. He got way too many good poses. Truth. And they, like I said, the rumors are still out there. So I think it's going to happen. With it, it's not, uh, yeah, it did happen. Yeah. I mean, WNBA just and did I think it that, quite hot, you know? Yeah. And I think the NBA players would definitely appreciate that too. Oh, yeah. Well, definitely. I think it would be awesome. All right. Yeah. Um, we got two more sillies and then our final question. And then we'll let you right. go back to having your fun life out there. You get to play. I already know what your NBA is going to be, but I'm interested to see what your WNBA would be. You get to play one on one against any superstar, NBA, deceased, alive, NWMBA, deceased, alive. Who is it and why? Uh, hmm. I, mean, I know what she's going to say. Maybe not. Or NBA. I, don't, I don't think you know. I would, I would actually love to play. Uh, Diana Taurasi. Uh, <laughs> That's exactly what I was thinking. Take my money now. Yeah, make it um, ring, make it ring. <laughs> because she's so like aggressive on the court when you watch her play, and I'd like to just like I want to see that in person, like that kind of aggression that right. she has that like I'm gonna kill you attitude, and like I just want to just be there, part of that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Might okay. go to some sports games on this. There you go. Right, we're gonna get to that in a minute. And then NBA, I'm assuming Kobe, or am I wrong? Um, in the NBA, um, uh, I've met Kobe and I would not want to be a part of the receding end of him giving me buckets. So. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want that smoke. I don't want that smoke. <laughs> um, honestly, I don't know. Probably like Kyrie because I know okay. he's like just to see his moves. I probably wouldn't stand a chance against Kyrie, but I just want to be there to see cool. how quick he is. That he's one. quick. He has crazy handles, and he's so shifty. Yeah, yeah, that would be cool. His, his handles are ridiculous. So, okay, yeah, I'd probably get crossed up by him and just be happy about uh, it. And clap it up. <laughs> it, lay on the floor and yeah. love it. Like, just like, yeah, like, <laughs> like embrace that moment. Yeah, yeah. like that was, that was awesome. <laughs> Absolutely, I freaking love that. We were just talking about Tarasi. Um, I'm gonna throw in another follow-up question. Sorry. Um, Tarasi being, you know, one of the goats of the WNBA, but we love Becky Hammond as well. 
How do you feel about Becky Hammond and the effect that she had for the women, for the women in general in the NBA? And do you feel that she should be the next successor to Popovich with the San Antonio Yeah, first? I mean, she's a pioneer. You know, first women to do it. Like mm-hmm. to me, mm-hmm. it's like gender shouldn't matter. Mm-hmm. If if you're if you're a basketball mind, like it doesn't matter what gender you are. Like mm-hmm. she's a basketball guru. Like she's a basketball mind, and she and I think Pop has it set up for her to be his successor, and that's freaking awesome. That's what we need. Um, and there's even a lot of you know uh, women college coaches that yeah. I think should oh, yeah. coach the men's side of it. Mm-hmm. Um, I can see that. Yeah. So Becky has shout out Becky Hannon. Like she's she's yeah. making things happen for women. Shout out to Becky. This is like our 10th yeah. show. Yeah. Give her a shout out. She's mm-hmm. awesome. Yeah. All right. So I'm, I'm interested to see what you'll say about this one because I know you're a diehard Lakers fan, but I don't know how you are in WNBA. You could surprise us. You get handed a blank check to play for any WNBA team you want. Right now, you sign the dotted line, you got, you know, a five-year deal. Where is MJ Haas going? Or are you staying home? And why? Uh, I just got my Sparks jersey, so Ah. (laughs) (laughs) I might have to do that. But you know what? Like, I'm a huge fan of Chelsea Gray. And she just broke all of our hearts and left. I was I was heartbroken. Yeah, so I'm a cheer for the Sparks, but I'm gonna play with Chelsea. Okay, <laughs> in Vegas. I love it. Vegas Aces. Okay, so we got a little. You can do maybe the half of your career in LA and then go to the Chelsea. Yeah. The you still play against her a lot because she'd be in your division. So that that would be pretty freaking cool. She got an autograph shirt from her after her game though, so that was pretty great. There you go. Pretty yeah. Nice. There you go. I used to play against Chelsea in the Drew League, the women's Drew. She How would was play that? like two, three years ago. How was mm-hmm. that? She was out here. What was yeah. that experience like for you? Oh, it, <laughs> it was like, it was crazy because she's just so good, you know? Mm-hmm. Sometimes you catch yourself and you're like in awe, but then like the competitive side of you is like, no, like lock her up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then you're like, but dang, she's yeah. good. So it's like this mixed emotion that, that you know you go through. Her and um, Odyssey Sims. Yeah, but then yeah, that championship game I watched and Chelsea made like the last like 15 points, and I was like, she's ridiculous. Like there, there's no guarding her. Like she's a bucket. Yeah, mm-hmm. for sure. I totally agree. Um, again, again, MJ, thank you so much for joining our show. I mean, we went a little over on time, but I really don't care because your story is freaking cool. You're such an <laughs> awesome person, awesome personality, both on and off the court. You're very smart um, and you care about people, which is huge with us. So thank you so much for being who you are and, you know, just saying the things that you said. We appreciate that so much. Thank you guys for having me and like sure. letting me just talk for like an hour and a half. So. <laughs> yeah, we got one more big one coming your way, so no, we're not. All right, all right. And we still got B does to happen. It's gonna happen because that's my that's my jam right there. Um. Okay. So unless George has any other questions about anything we've talked about so far, um, I'm pretty much out except for my final question. George, are you good? You ready for your final question? No, you good, Ricky. Go ahead. No, uh, you lead off, brother. Go ahead. I'm gonna let you lead off today. Go ahead. Oh, me? That's a good question. What you got? Yeah, what you got? All right, so MJ, so I asked, um, so I asked Courtney, so like Courtney did uh, get you on our show. It worked. Right? Mm -hmm. So who should be uh, one of our next guests um, that you nominate to be on Mm -hmm. our show? All right. I got two for you guys. Okay. Okay. Uh, First one, uh, Stan Dixon. She's a longtime friend of mine. Uh, we used to go at it uh, with each other, both in, I think, all the way since high school, high school to college to um, the women's Drew. She's okay. just, she does so much for, you know, youth basketball. Oh, cool. You know, boys, girls. She's a trainer. Mm-hmm. Um, you should hit her up. And then another one is my teammate, my run it teammate, uh, Michelle Miller. M&M. Oh, the Pasadena product. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> Y'all got to get her on the show. 
<clears throat> yeah, but yeah. She, she's always busy because you know she's actually in school at UCLA trying to yeah. be a surgeon. Oh, that's awesome! Like, oh, okay. right? And is she, she doing like shoes and stuff? Because like I see like on Instagram artist, that she, yeah, like an artist on shoes. Yeah, we definitely got to get her mm-hmm. somehow, some way. Oh, we definitely got to get her. Uh, if you we see her, hit her, her up. Yeah, just yeah. Give, shoot she her. was um the championship game MVP when we won the championship. Oh, yeah, she nice. did. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Shoot me. Um. Shoot me their instas whenever you get a chance to it. I'll make. Yeah, I will. We'll spam our IG. Oh, it's happening. Yeah. Yeah. Spam our IG. All right, George. Go ahead. No, you're good. We're all good. I think we're gonna do that. My last question. I'm good. All right. My last question. Male or female? Let's just say eight years old and up or going older. What advice do you give to up and coming ballers? Both or on the court and off the court obstacles that are going to approach them? Mm, um, great advice that I got from my college coaches to control what you can control. Uh, put in the time, put in the effort. Um, if you're younger, you know, know your priorities. School is first. Ooh, I like you that. know, school is first. You know, everything else falls after that even if you're a hooper you know school first that's what I was taught to but um as far as on the court you know uh take accountability if you mess up say hey my bad you know be there for your teammates be the hype man for your teammates you know like me and George yeah exactly because when you see you know when you're truly truly happy for your teammates success like that will come back to you yeah um Mm-hmm. yeah and and you know mamba mentality that's right all day that's every if day. you don't know what that is you better learn what it is that's right. you you know it you're gonna learn today i love it MJ. <laughs> exactly. i love it again that's gonna touch somebody's life just what you just said right now you know that a little 10 year old that's sitting next to dad watching this or sit next to mom or sister or whoever and they're just like i won't be like her you know you never <laughs> you never know so Again, awesome, MJ. Thank you so much again for hanging out with us. You know, we're over on time, but we appreciate you hanging with us. And now you're stuck with us because we have to go to B-dubs. It's happening. I'm going to make it happen. Um, and in fact, you're right here. We can definitely make it happen. We're going to have some fun. Um, again, you guys, check out MJ on Thursdays over at uh, Legacy Church in Downey, Stamp Center, Thursday night with her team. Mama 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 Pizza. Pizza. They're straight beast. You guys have to check them out. Um, go and see her. You see what we're talking about. You won't regret it. And if you get the chance to meet her, most definitely. Okay, wait, hold on. No, nope, we're holding on. I got a question for you guys. Uh-oh. Oh, uh-huh. I never seen this before. <laughs> I, never, I never had a guest ask us a Table. question. Buddha, Buddha did it once. Okay, Is it ahead. for both of us or for each of oh, us? for both of you guys. Okay, go ahead. Who's taking this P4E championship? as an analyst as an analyst okay i don't know if i could pick a winner but who's gonna be in the championship game that's a, okay um oh. i think well you guys are gonna be in for sure and i'm not just saying that i truly feel that um put us on the spot bro i don't know well at least i'm answering <laughs> okay i got you guys in for sure um I think the other semifinal game, I love P for E. A lot of my girls are there, but you know, they're, they're having some, some issues. So we'll see what happens next week. Um, Brianna Taylor is really strong as well. So I could see you guys playing them or even unwanted. And I know you guys know unwanted. You guys have played them many times. So I would love to see that as well, but I'm going to go out on a limb. I'm going to say you guys take on Brianna Taylor in the finals. What do you got, George? Okay. Okay. Well, um, no so bias. like Robert no bias. said, stop. <laughs> no Brianna Taylor is looking strong, and they're um, the most physical team in the league right now. Um, I love you guys, Mambasitas, because you guys have very great shooters, including um, what, what was what's her name? The one that shoots from the logo. I'm sorry. Uh, Andrea. She's oh, beat. Yeah, Andrea. Got her coming in weeks. 
Oh, for real? Okay, cool. So, yeah, so um, I like you guys, the way you guys pass the ball, because that, rem that reminds you, that's really pretty much equivalent on how you guys run the ball with run it. You know, you guys pass the ball. You guys find, like, um, open shots and everything. So I'll put you guys in the finals. And then I love P4E. P4E has some great players, T and Tess Williams. P to PG. Yeah, they're they're beasting right now, and um, they're a well coached team, um, coached by Don. But I think I'll pick Mambasitas, and then like you guys said, Team Unwanted is um, looking pretty strong too. Like Adriana Lopez is just you don't live. Live. Yeah, <laughs> she even tied the game. She even tied the game on Thursday to send it to overtime against the game was nuts. That game went into overtime. That game got crazy. Yeah. I did. But um, Team One wants it. Don't sleep on them. But I think my my uh, prediction, if you really want to put it, not being biased at all, I'll pick you guys versus P4E. Okay. That would be exciting. But Team One wants it. You can't sleep on them either. Yeah. I Thank think you. we're actually play playing um, this next game. So Damn, we'll I'm going to be gone. George, you gotta give me some good good footage. So I'm just oh, I will. Like I'm charging my batteries as we speak, so I'm gonna all make right. sure I get all of it. I, well, I hope it's charged by Thursday. <laughs> it, 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 it'll be. It will be. It's charging right now, so it should awesome. be charged by Thursday. Awesome. Awesome. All right, guys. MJ, you're freaking great. We freaking love you. You're amazing. Thank you so much for just hanging with us again. All I gotta say out there is, first off, thank you, George, for being my right hand man as usual. MJ no has given you. us the, such a cool outlook on life, both on the court and off. I appreciate that. So with that said, world, I just want to throw this out there here, sports freaks. Always give 100%. Be better and bless somebody's day. We're out of here. Peace out. Hey.